Okay, so liquid rats. No, nope. We can't start out of the gate like that. Need to get some sort of introduction first. A Plague Tale Innocence was the Epic Game Store's free game on August 5th, 2021. I had no prior knowledge of the game before playing it, or rather, I tried to start with no prior knowledge. This is the text I received back when I said I was about to start playing it. Followed up with the advice, don't play it. And I won't lie, this game is dark. Really dark. I almost stopped playing dark. The first two hours feel like they were made by a sadist, trying to find what bothers you, and kept prodding until they do. So full-blown disclosure, if you're squeamish, this may not be the game for you, let alone this review. While I'm going to keep most of the imagery to a minimum, I am about to talk about some of it. A Plague Tale wastes no time making sure you know what the game theme is. Dead animals, inquisition, witch burning, plague, devourment by rodents. Maybe a little post battlefield corpse stacking. And we barely made it out of the gate. While I'm pretty unfettered by death, gore, and violence in most games, this definitely hits different. The atmosphere built is this fine line between the life during the plague, albeit severely exaggerated, or what I would describe as hell itself. There was this feeling of immense tension constantly building, and what reprieves were allowed were so short-lived that any sort of comfort, or achievement for that matter, were snuffed out almost immediately for the next challenge. I do use the term challenge more as a referral to the story's progression, as the gameplay overall is fairly easy. A Plague Tale's gameplay starts off as an interactive story, kinda in the veins of a visual novel. It feels less like playing a game, and more like being allowed to choose when to start the next cutscene. As you play, more gameplay options do slowly become available. You will have more stealth and puzzle elements, but actual combat is very light through most of the game. I can only assume the introduction to new ammo types and alchemy concoctions being added slowly is an attempt to keep from overwhelming the player. But this slows the pacing of action in an already story-driven game down to a crawl. I was probably four hours into gameplay before I felt like the game's pace was finally hitting its stride. Resources for crafting are fairly plentiful, but I still found myself trying to hoard them. I was always concerned about a moment I was going to need all my normal rocks. And fire rocks. And metal melting rocks. And you get the idea. I am terrible about item anxiety. And even during what I knew was the last level, I was allowing myself to get killed instead of using the expensive second chance items. There is always an event that is going to be more important to save them for, right? That and checkpoints are very forgiving. I don't think I was ever set back more than three minutes. I did like how there were options for how to deal with certain puzzles. For example, you might be able to distract a guard and sneak by, or you can decide to kill him, alerting the other guards, which you would then have to figure out how to deal with. Maybe this is just a me thing, but when a game is on rails too hard, any chance I get to explore or take a detour, I will. And while there are different collectibles to find, I didn't make it a goal to collect them. I am coming down pretty hard on this game, which may just be this is not my go-to genre, but it seems important to say. The story is solid. Being that this is such a story-driven game, a good engaging story is a must. And in this aspect, A Plague Tale definitely delivered. You play as Amicia, a teenage girl who has an affinity with the sling. While out hunting with her father, you come across land that seems to be getting devoured by some sort of spreading black, for lack of a better term, rot. You go to your home trying to find out what's going on, just in time for it to fall under attack by the Inquisition. You have to try to get your younger brother, Hugo, which you have minimum relationship with away from the estate. Their mother has kept Hugo secluded from everyone because of some ailment he suffers from. And then you run. Hugo has some headaches, so you have to run and try to get him help for that. And then run some more. As I really don't want to ruin the story, the running continues for a while. You meet other kids along the way, which have different expertise to help you along the journey. 
I did find it an odd choice to make it a kid's adventure game, though, considering that the target audience is definitely a more mature crowd. Normally when you have a child or teen protagonist, you are trying to engage with a younger audience. Maybe some of the sense of tension would be lost on playing an older or an adult character, though. Speaking of tension, the sharp violin sounds, and the character's nervous breathing while trying to hide were a nice touch. And I have to make fun of the first boss, Conrad. This guy is running around with a two-handed mace chasing you throughout the city. And when he finally catches you, he is so scared of a 15-year-old girl, he suits up an armor to face her. I mean, he was right in the end to be scared, but the armor didn't help. As 10 hours of playing took me right up to the last level, it felt like it would have been a waste not to just complete the game. I went from dreading continuing through the game at the two hour mark, to being pretty invested by hour six. The slow gameplay was quite the slog through the early game, which makes it hard for me to recommend to anyone that isn't into visual novel style games. The difficulty is pretty easy, and the abundance of resources make the game very accessible. The game's difficulty and the storytelling style would be great for a younger target audience the game is definitely not aimed at. But if you make it a couple hours in, the story can definitely feel worth finishing. I still could have went my entire life without seeing rats in games with liquid physics, though. Thanks for watching. It's pretty here. And it smells like earth. Yaki duck. Is that where Lucas is? Yaki duck. I hope so.